All right, anytime you're ready, Tito. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Tino Rodriguez. I was born in Tijuana, across the border from California. Uh, I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, there was a lot of drugs, a lot of violence in my home. In my home. It was. Uh, I grew up with seven siblings. I'm the one in the mer very middle. You know, I got uh, three up top and three on the bottom. So I grew up uh, till the age of 12 without a father. You know, all, all that I learned from my father was, you know, alcoholism, drug addiction, you know, uh, spouse abuse and stuff like that. He never put his hands on me, but uh, in consequence of that, my mother, you know, I, 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 I look like my father, so I, I got the consequences of their separation and the bitterness. So uh, we used to go to church, but I didn't really meet Jesus there. So I went to the streets. I joined the gang at age 12, you know, and uh, I put my heart into it. You know, I was I was full of pain, and all my pain was ref reflecting through uh, through my actions. You know, I started with heroin at the age of 12 years old. You know, and then everything came after that, uh, including crime. You know, I ended up shooting a lady for a carjacking. I went to a juvenile hall for three years. I came out and uh, it didn't really do anything to me. You know, uh, as behavior wise, it just made me a little bit more rebellious and uh, a little bit more hatred, you know. Besides hating my situation in my home, now I hated the authority. Because uh, the, the way I was growing up, it was, it was natural to me. Everybody was doing it. And everybody was showing me back up and, and, you know, street love, which I never knew. I never knew the meaning of love. So uh, I ended up getting in a lot of trouble. From there, I went to uh, Houston, Texas. But previous for this, at the age of four, my parents moved to Houston, Texas. And I lived over there a little bit. You know, my experience, you know, it was hard because, first of all, I didn't know the language. And second of all, you know, the domestic violence in my home was still going on, so uh, uh, it was embarrassing for me because at the age of nine years old, I used to, you know, wet my pants and go to school. They would punish me and send me to school like that. So, you know, I feel like left out. The only place I I, I feel that I felt like I belonged was with with kids on the streets and gangs. So, we came back to Mexico when I was ten years old, and all this stuff happened. You know. I went to juvenile hall and I went back to uh, to the states at the age of 18. I had met a girl that was 15 years old. She, uh, I ended up convincing her because I didn't want to go. You know, uh, my life was in danger because of the gang gang things I was doing. So uh, I convinced my mom to to let me uh, take my girlfriend with me to the states. She had nobody either. She was 15 years old, living on the streets. We were living in a little room, barely making it. So we went to the United States, you know, she got pregnant, I got into drugs. Uh, she didn't join the gangs, but I was active in the gangs in uh, Southwest Houston, Texas. It's called, a gang called the uh, Southwest Cholos. And, uh, well, in 96, we declared war on the police, on the local police. So we were doing a lot of stuff, you know. I ended up going to prison. You know, uh, my sentence was gonna be, uh, 99 years for uh, seven felonies. Uh, in consequence of that, I lost my wife, my, my, my daughter. You know, I raised her to the age of three. You know, I loved her very much and that really hurt me. But uh, I couldn't think of that while I was doing time, you know. I couldn't, I, I was a man, you know, supposedly was a man in the gangs and, you know, I sucked it up in the streets and I sucked it up when, when I went to prison, you know. I just, you know, assume the consequences. That's why I knew, already knew what, you know, my gang, the only, there's three ways it was gonna take me to the hospital, to the prison or death. So I was ready for either one, you know, so uh, I went in there, you know, I joined the, a gang there. You know, it's just like a local gang from Houston. And then, then I, I graduated to uh, the Mexican mafia and uh, we started putting in work in there. 
and um, I ended up in uh, several knife fights. I actually got stabbed in the head, and uh, I went into a coma for for three months. The person that I got into a fight with, he, he didn't make it. You know, I, I woke up three months later after thinking it was like yesterday, and I thought uh, well, I wanted to finish what I started with that guy. It was a black guy, you know. It's a, it's a racist thing going on in there. So the nurse told me she was black, and she told me, "Don't worry about him. You know, he's 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 in heaven. You know, you just worry about doing the rest of your life here in prison." So I passed out again, and you know, it took me eight months to walk again and talk again, and you know, come out in general population. You know, I, I ended up getting a, a manslaughter case because everything was on camera. You know, he started stabbing me first, and you know, I stabbed him back. You know, with somebody else's knife. So. It was hard for me. It was hard. You know, the greatest uh, pain to my heart to remember. You know where I've been and, and how God uh, took care of me, you know. And uh, I remember one time I was already in there for like four years, almost four years. And uh, we were doing some trusty stuff over there at the at the church, at the general building where the school is at. And... Uh, I was sitting there in, 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 in prison in Texas. It's very hot, so you get you know fungus diseases and jockey age and all that. And, and it was a Sunday, you know, and, and we were up early because it's too hot to keep sleeping. So uh, in front of the fans and just you know in the day room. So I heard somebody call, you know, church Sunday church in the morning. But. I didn't, I didn't, I don't know what happened, but something rang in my, in my head, and I, and I was thinking, church, church building, air conditioning, <laughs> so, so I went over there to the air conditioning, and now I realize what was happening, the Bible says that uh, nobody comes to God if he's not drawn by himself to him, if you're not called from God to him, you know, you're not going to go and so in my way, I went over there, and then they started, you know, they started preaching and singing, and and I remember when I was a little child, you know, I I remember that was the only times that there was no violence in my house. When we're inside the church, outside the church, I would get pinched for sleeping or for getting up from the bench or talking to other kids and stuff. But when we're in the church, it was so peaceful. Sometimes I just wanted to stay there and sleep on the bench and. My family to sleep around me and just stay people, but that's not, it didn't happen. So I started going to church for that, for the air conditioning, and uh, I believe the, 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 the word of God is power, so it started working in my life. So there was a guy, he was a minister, he would go around the world with his wife, and uh, he came to that Sunday uh, service. He, uh, he preached and we sang some praise songs, you know, and he said uh, he was doing a seminar for six months. And I was like, no, I'm not, you know, he, he had a list. Anybody wants to, who wants to be a part of this is going to be six months every Thursday for a couple of hours. And I was like, I'm not going to commit to that. And I'll commit to Sundays a couple of hours, you know, every now and then, but I'm not going to commit to that. I was, I was thinking, I didn't say that aloud, but I was thinking of it, you know, so he had, he had, he didn't finish his, his invitation. He said, at the end of the seminar, we're going to throw a pizza party. So that got me going, you know, that got me going. I was like, man, I haven't eaten pizza in almost four years. So I went in, I went and signed and I signed up and, uh, and I did complete the course. And I liked it. Actually, I liked it. I loved it. But I'm, I love the way that those people just talked to us and hugged us and loved us without even knowing this. I mean, in my mind, you know, in the streets, you always do something for something in return, you know. And 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 my question to him was, who pays you or, or what benefit or do your taxes returns or what? I, I, my mind was just, you know, there was no catch. There was, that was that love that I started, you know, feeling and and seeing and understanding that. I didn't know God himself, and I don't know his son, but I started, you know, meeting his people that were drawing drawing my, you know, my, my, my mind and my heart to him. So, 
So uh, well, I did my time and I got out. You know, actually, when I, that happened, actually, I, 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 I finished my course. I, I received Christ. I got baptized. But I was still so young. You know, I was I was 24 when I came in and, and 29 when I came out. And uh, but I was so I, I've always been so you know so so forward. And I said, well, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna do what God wants me to do, and I'm gonna go out there and reach people. And I and I I, I so that was ha that's what happened. You know, I fell in my face because I got in the way. So uh, I ended up going back, and you know, uh, everything I've done, I put 100% to it. If it was drugs or alcohol or gangs or crime, I put 100%, you know, of myself in there. And I felt disappointed in myself because you know I, I felt like a hypocrite. The devil, you know, I wasn't prepared, you know, against his schemes and lies. So I, so I believed in him, and I, and I stayed away. You know, I believed in God, and I never cursed God, but it was just it wasn't for me. It was for everybody else, but for me. But you know, that was it was it was so sad. I I, I wish I would have just stayed. I wish I would have just asked God for forgiveness, because he when I got out, he put the right people in my path and. And I just went over there, and, and they cried because I told them, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to walk away. I, I, I'm, my mind and my heart is not here. It's in the streets, and I'm going to go back. And, you know, they tried to do everything in their power to, to make me stay, but I had already made my mind up. So I ended up going to prison again and again and again. And um, around 2006, I met uh, I met a woman. Uh, she was on the streets also and drugs and we ended up living together and uh, well we ended up going to prison together you know? and uh, once again the story started all over again you know, I had a son with her but this time she was in there with me so we ended up getting a sentence of eight years uh, we ended up doing three years off of that but six months before I, 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 uh, I uh, we got out of prison, you know, I, I wanted to come back. She has three daughters and I have a son with her and, and I, I wanted to do the, the right thing. And I knew that the only way I could do the right thing is with God because I already knew those guys over there in the Texas prisons taught me everything I need to, needed to know. I read the Bible three times and I chopped it up many times. And I had the knowledge here but not here. So, uh, so I prayed to the Lord, and, and we used to get conjugal visits on, on, on Wednesdays, and and I introduced my my wife. She's eleven and a half years younger than me. So uh, I introduced her to Christ. She received Christ in that little room, and we came out. And there goes God again. You know, He puts us in the right place. Actually, there was a preacher in there, you know, that used to go in there, and a uh, little short guy, and. Uh, I was a collector, you know, I was a, you know, they sell drugs and you, you, you run a tab and on the weekends you get a visit. So I get that list, you know, I'm the troublemaker. So they give me a list. I get a buddy of mine and I go collect drug money. So, uh, this guy started making a Bible study. So the Bible study started, you know, the started getting bigger and my list started getting smaller. <laughs> so, so I went into, I had a talk with that little guy, that little pastor in there, you know, that went in there. I told him, you know, next Thursday, Thursday, I don't want you here, man. If you, if you come next Thursday, I'm going to, I'm going to stick you, man. I'm going to, I'm going to stab you, man. You know, you know, this guy's, you know, they're, you know, they're just listening to you because they're here. You know, once they get out and I was, I was, I was talking of my own experience, you know. I didn't know God. I just judged for what I did. I judged everybody else. This is just jailhouse religion. So uh, next next week, I was just, you know, happy because he wasn't going to show up. <laughs> and uh, it was 10 o'clock, 10.05, and I was like, wow, okay, good. And a little bit over 10.05, I see that gate open, and there he comes. He was kind of bald in the, in the head and big body. He's a short guy, so the Bible looked like huge on him, you know, like an encyclopedia or something. So. so there I go, man, you know, do what I do. I put him to a blind spot, and I told him, you know what, I told you last week, man, you're already warned, man, so you're going to get yours, man. You know, I don't care the consequences, you know, because I was rowdy in there, you know, everybody, you know. 
it was scared of me, you know, not not because of my size or, or whatever, you know, there's people bigger and stronger than me, but it was just, you know, that I didn't care. I would do anything to anybody to hurt them any way possible and with anything I could. So uh, this guy's just started spitting out words of power. He said, God's got a purpose for your life, you know. It, 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 uh, it brings emotion to me because this is something that, that I didn't think it was going to happen anymore. You know, I wasn't going to go back and be a hypocrite anymore. And, uh, and I couldn't, I couldn't stab the guy. I dropped the, the blade and, and he started like, you know, you have a daughter. And, and, and I was like, how did this guy know I have a daughter? And she loves you and she's in trouble and she needs you to intercede for her. And, just got, got down on my knees with him and he prayed for me. And I came back to Christ. Amen. And I never saw that list again. Now I was part of that Bible study. And actually, when here in Mexico, when you get out of prison, you need somebody to go to. I had no family, so I went into the pastor's house with my wife and everything. And, and then I moved out and, you know, we were neighbors. And, but I want to do the do the right thing, but the devil's right there, you know. He knew that my purpose in life and in the ministry was big, but you know, I I I, I, I didn't grow. I didn't. I don't know what happened. You know, I I think it's you know, my father just got purpose, and everything went against me. You know, uh, some lady, you know, that rented me a house, you know, made all these things up and tried to raise my rent, and she put CPS on me, took the kids away again. I went to the Newspaper to the television to any media, telling them that was there was unjust. But I was on parole. My wife was on parole, and I would tell them, you know, drug test me. I'm clean. You know, this is unfair. There's nothing going on. My kids are going to school. You know, I got my three bedroom house. I got my own car, new furniture. You know, this is not true. That what the lady's saying is not true. So nobody listened to me. People, everybody wanted money. So I went to a party and I grabbed a beer and you know what happened after that. You know, I ended up uh, going back to crime. I ended up hurting my wife. I uh, I left that place and ended up here in Kosovo. You know, I thought uh, I was wanted from the law for many things. I was uh, I, I broke my parole, so they were looking for me for that. I was a commissionist selling tequila, so nobody knew my name. They knew my nickname. Tino, and uh, so I just came here to die in this little island, and uh, I was here for a year alone, and uh, and I ended up calling my ex, you know, my wife, my, my, my son's mother, and we reconciled, she came over here, but uh, we started dr doing drugs and alcohol, and just, it was uh, a little bit worse than before. Bible says that one demon comes out and seven more come, you know, so. So I used to work, I was making good money and I used, had good intentions, but it never worked. You know, they took all my parental rights from my, my son and my wife's three daughters because of my record. And uh, they took him away forever, you know, so. One day, you know, this guy where I used to work at, you know, he invited me to a church. And I was like, nah, man, I don't, no, I'm not doing that again. That's like twice I messed it up, you know. So I didn't feel worthy of going back to God, you know. So um, one day I, I was going through some things, you know. When you're in the streets, you're only happy when you're high or drunk or, well, yeah, only in the beginning anyways, because like when you got two, three, four days high, you're not happy anymore, but, you know. I ended up showing up to that little church, and I remember seeing a little short little pastor with tattoos all over and with a big smile, and he just hugged me. And you know where I come from, we don't we don't hug a lot, you know. Not even when I was a child, I didn't get you know love like that. You know, people getting close to me like that. You know, I felt like the Grinch or something. Like that. So uh, there was another guy. He was the one that you know he was translating. It was a bilingual church, Waves of Grace Church in Kosovo. And uh, I ended up going over there and I ended up 
talking to God. You know, I was tired. Mm -hmm. I already been stabbed in the neck here in Cozumel. You know, they got me in an ambulance, surgery, six hours. Ended up getting in a bunch of trouble. I used to work, but at, you know, after work, I would run the streets. So I know I was gonna end up getting killed or doing a lot of time in prison. But I didn't care anymore. I just wanted to end it all. You know? So uh, I remember one one binge. I was with my wife, you know, like three or four days, and, and I cried out to the Lord. You know, I don't I don't want this anymore. You know, and if you're real and if you're up there and if you're listening to me, I want to ask you two things right now. You got to make a choice. I gave him a choice, and I never even heard of that before. So I told her either either you help me. If you love me or, or you take my life, because I don't want to take anybody else's life anymore. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if I got away with it or it was God's will. And in Texas, I was supposed to be sentenced to 99 years. And here I am. So, uh, so COVID came and all this stuff was happening. You know, I had a little money saved up. So I got high through all COVID. I, you know. 14 days of uh, getting high and drunk and not eating. And I just got so sick and I had to went, go to the hospital. I went to the hospital, you know, I was there for a couple of weeks. When I came out, I didn't have no urge for drugs or alcohol. It was just in my head. I didn't feel normal. So uh, I stepped out the hospital by myself and I was like, should I go get a beer to feel all right? But I needed to talk to the pastor. Because I told God, you know, I'm gonna sit at this church I will show up. I was showing up to this church like a year on and off. And I told God, I'm going to sit in this chair till you take drugs and alcohol from me. And from there, we'll, we'll take off. But it wasn't happening. You know, so. Uh, so before this 14 days, I remember one day, you know, I got up to the Sunday service. And uh, it ended at 11. And, uh. Across the street, there's a beer place. I drank some beers and started giving out sandwiches. So I started giving out sandwiches, kind of buzzing. And when I, in my neighborhood, I was, you know, some other day I was getting into a fight and I laid this guy down and some lady approached me and said, aren't you the guy that gives out sandwiches out there in that church over there? And I feel so ashamed. So I, I, I already knew God was develop, developing something in my life. I knew it. I didn't know how and I didn't ask. I just, I just know that those couple of months or three months before when I cried out he hurt me because some things were happening so that was that debate when I went to the hospital and I came out I was either get a beer talk to the pastor or talk to the pastor and then go get a beer and it was just that struggle there so I said I'm going to talk to the pastor because if I drink a beer I'm not going to talk to the pastor anymore I'm going to get a buzz and I'm going to go out there and do whatever so I went talk to the pastor and uh, it's been two months two years five months since I've talked to that pastor and I told the pastor I want you to pray for me and I want you to ask God to help me you know I don't want to get high anymore I've been doing it for three, three, 33 years of my life in and out of prison and I want deliverance I don't want you know to hold on and desire it anymore so he pretty much did the job there you know he did the job and I've been sober you know it cost me a lot the, the doctor said I, I wasn't going to live normal anymore I needed controlled medication to be able to function, you know, pills for to sleep, to wake up, to eat. My nervous system was all messed up. My my liver was all messed up. My lungs were 30%. My kidneys, they thought it was COVID. I, I, my wife said, it's not COVID, it's drugs. This guy, is high in pain. So I told God, you know, I'll take a couple of Xanax and a Coca-Cola or some coffee and I'll walk in with water with you. You know, I'm high. I'm high. I can't be serving you high. I'm high. So one night we had a big dinner. I went to sleep all night. So I started eating. I gained a little weight. But till this day, I don't drink any any pills, any medication. And uh, my, my, my body is, is healthy. So four months after that happened, I'll sit into my couch and I always hear people talk, you know, God talked to me, God spoke to me, but I never experienced it myself. So that day I was sitting there in my couch and I felt God speak to me. I didn't hear him. I felt him like a, when you're nervous or anxious or scared, I felt him and I recognized this. 
his feeling voice. It wasn't the devil because I know him and I've been with him and I recognize him. It was God. And he told me, you know what? You got to go to prison here. And I have met a boy 10 years old in the ghetto uh, 10 years before and we made him a gangster. And I bumped into him here in the island and he did a crime and he ended up in prison. So God told me, go over there and visit him. And I, 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 was, I didn't want to go. Like everybody else, like Moses or Jonah or all those guys but I told God if you want me to do this you know I, I I made a commitment and I told you if you take the drugs and alcohol from me I will serve you and that was my first step so I ended up getting some food and I went over there it was so hard for me because you know I've never go to prison willingly they always take me over there <laughs> so so I went in there and I thought I was like you know by this time I already had fixed everything I, I, I fixed my parole and all the warrants that I had and I had a license and and I even got married with my wife and God had given me my son back uh, after eight years. So, you know, I had to step up. But I didn't step up with my own strength and with my own mind like in, in the in the first time that I backslid. I told him, you, you do what you got to do. So I went over there and I told him I was, you know, saved and God took all this away from me and uh, he thought I was crazy. You know, like he knew me, you know, he was seeing me pull the trigger, seeing me do a lot of things. But I kept telling him, God loves you and, you know, so at the end of that visit, he said, man, you know, can you help me out, man? My mom's not here and I need some hygiene. Government here doesn't give us anything. So I was like, man, I'm going to have to come back next Thursday. So I came back next Thursday with a little bit more food and I started sharing with the other guys there, his buddies. And at the end of that visit, some other guys say, I'm not even from the state. I came here and got in trouble and I don't even have, I don't even have shoes. So I'm not done, you know. I looked up at the sky and I told God, if this is what you want me to do, I'll do it. And uh, well, that, I was in the visitation area and it grew up to 21 inmates listening to me but I was so scared every time you know but I remember I reading about a prophet that he told God I don't know what to say and God told him you open your mouth and I will give you the words so I had a scooter back then and I'll go in my scooter and, and before I get to prison I'll open my mouth in faith that he was going to give me the words also you know because he said he doesn't choose favorites so so every time I had something to say so uh the group got so big that, you know, they, the guards didn't want me there. And, you know, if you want to come in as a pastor, minister, whatever you got to put in and then you sign up. And I did that. And, you know, now I go in officially, you know, people call me pastor, but I don't like, you know, a tag on me like that. I'm just, a, I feel I'm just a servant of God like anybody else. Should. So uh, the group grew up to 90 people. There's 125 population inmate here. I grew up to 90, you know, there's a lot of curious people and, uh, you know, so God shook the group down to 60 solid. So now 60 solid are, are, are listening to the word of God. So in, in this, meanwhile, you know, there's some brother, Ken, uh, he's my brother in Christ. He has helped me a lot in my growth. And he said, well, I got somebody that is going to do a Bible. He wants you to do a Bible study in there. And he wants you, he, and the Bible study is very, very expensive. And he put all this pressure on me. And I was just doing my testimony and a little scripture here and there. But I wasn't ready to, to do a Bible study. I'm not, I didn't go to Bible school. I don't know a thing. So I told him, I don't know if I can do this, man. You know, I don't know. Well, you're going you're, you're gonna to have to. You know, you're going to man up. You know, because this is your calling. So. so he brought all these books. And I gave everybody a book. And, and, I, and I opened up the book. And it turns out it was that same book, that same Bible study that I did in Texas in prison in a seminar for the pizza party. It was called Experiencing God, Mi Experiencia con Dios. And I was like, I know this book back and forth. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing the Bible study. Last year, uh, well, two Decembers ago, 10 guys got baptized. This December, 18 people got baptized. My wife got baptized. My son got baptized. We have one of her daughters at home now. I got my own home. I got my own vehicle. I didn't go back to work. I just go by faith. 
and God has provided me in every way possible. And I just, I'm just happy. And this is where I want to stay. I want to move. So anybody that's listening to this, just pray for me. The enemy is, he's mad at me. He's going against me here and there. And uh, because of what I'm doing, you know, anybody can go in, in a church and and bench warm it, you know. But I'm out here on the streets doing this every day and, and going to prison. And, and I, in, in the land that I that I bought, there's a little place there and we built the grace house. It's like a, like a halfway house and prisoners are coming out. So this is growing beyond my 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 uh, my ability to do this. I'm just trusting in the Lord for the wisdom and the resources and everything that needs to be done for Him. And I know this is where I want to die. You know, serving God. I don't want to die in the streets anymore. I want to live and serve Him. And if God has mercy on me and it gives me a long life, I want to dedicate the rest of my life and my family's life to Him. And um, just pray for me. Pray for the ministry. Absolutely. Absolutely.